Femboy in common use is more a marketable term useful for identifying with a certain aesthetic rather than a description of one's gender identity. I believe this helps explain the common experience people have moving on from the term. It's less a move from a gender identity and more to a new aesthetic presentation. And I think that's what is kind of being described in the Finster clip and the broader discourse, is that when we suggest that the word femboy might not be used anymore by 2026, and the reason being, you know, how many femboys still identify as such five years later, it's hard to name them because they're all trans, I don't think that it's the case that them being trans is the major operative factor there, because that's a description of somebody's gender identity, right? It's not that people are moving from femboy to become transgender, and that's why the term isn't being used anymore, or they're not identifying with it anymore, but rather they're moving from one aesthetic to another, in many cases. Obviously not always, there will be people that have their gender identity tied more to this move than others, and it is often the case that it influences it, uh, like it did for me, for instance, but like it's not intrinsically linked is what I mean to say. If you don't know, Finster came out as a trans some time ago. Yahoo Wahoo, I don't care, and you shouldn't either. However, it's not to say that it's meaningless, but rather that you know, it's still good for him. Very pog, it is what it is. But I've already gone through why I don't particularly care that Finster is trans. And it's not that's because I don't like him or because I'm a transphobe or whatever. But rather, I'm just kind of like embodying the position that I hope that the world and society will get to when it comes to gender identity. And that coming out wouldn't be like this big deal, uh, but rather just like a fun little quirk you learn about somebody. You know, like, oh, I also enjoy hockey, you know, that's cool. Oh, it turns out I thought I was enjoying hockey, but I like American football instead. You know, that kind of level of investment. But that's obviously in an ideal scenario where, you know, like gender roles and expectations are not really a thing anymore. And people are free to, you know, be whoever the fuck they want. Because I don't give a shit. It doesn't affect me none. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, why do I care? I'm an American. I believe in freedom and individual liberty. But like in, in the current context, and I've already explained, you know, why coming out is a thing and yada yada. You can watch that video if you want. There'll be a link to it. Finster came out as trans. Good for him. Love to see it. <clears throat> and um, I was just scrolling my Twitter timeline, uh, as I am reluctant to do nowadays, and don't actually do as often anymore. And I found this tweet, and I saw Finster, and I didn't know what the fuck was going to be, you know, coming up. The caption is, well, there it is. Um, I don't know anything about the account that posted it. So I listened to it, and uh, we will as well. I have some thoughts. My prediction is that the word femboy falls completely out of use by, like, 2026. No one's going to be using it. It's going to be something else. And I the good timeline. I'm not even saying it's gonna fall back to anything else. It's gonna be a new thing. I don't know what yet. No chance. Dude, it's gotta. Because think about it. There's a precedent set now. Name a femboy that's been a femboy for longer than five years. Name five femboys. Uh, 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 Bridget? Nope. Incorrect. Loud incorrect buzzer. Uh, uh, <laughs> Michelle Obama. Obama's wife. Well, wait, you want to know why they're not femboys now? They're trans. That's what it is. It's not even a twink death thing. You didn't make it five years. Well, it's, it's like a twink evolution thing. Did you? No, I made it four. That's why I said five. <laughs> Boys aren't real. Or at least they shouldn't be. Am I right, fellas? Or so not fellas? Soon to be not fellas? So this is actually interesting to me, and I've talked about it a lot on this channel in the past. There are several videos where I talk about femboys, and I think there is a, a larger piece of discourse here when it comes to gender identity, gender expression, and, and all this kind of stuff. I find it very interesting, mostly because I'm a freak for real, you know, but also because I was at one point identifying with the term femboy, and now I do not. And there's a broader discussion around this, and usually the people that are mad about it are going to be some of the worst people on the internet already. So like this here, <laughs> the first one, um, like I can see where people are coming from with it. It doesn't mean that they're right, but I can, I understand how the gears are turning. They say implying the femboys and traps. So like already you're out. Already you've already lost the plot. The like, it's a slur, bro. Your knowledge of what a femboy is comes entirely from porn if you are using this term. Sorry, you lost. This is not pornographic, man. However, there is a part of the argument to be made that the fetishization of femininity and all of the negatives that it brings women who are primarily the demographic that are exhibiting and expressing themselves in a feminine capacity is now affecting men. Wow. It seems like almost, you know, the patriarchy you know, sex is not good even for fucking non-women. Wow. Who could find that to be the case, or whatever, uh, are really just eggs that need to be pushed into being trans? Yeah, there's a word for that. It's called grooming. And it's the famous Astolfo picture. 
feminine men don't have to be trans, and it's not okay to push them to identify as such. Like, on paper, on poster board, that's a fine statement, you know? You could be a feminine man. You don't have to be trans. You know, it's not okay to push people to identify in any way they don't want. The thing is, when the fuck does that happen? It doesn't. It does not. It is a made-up thing. We made it up. This problem was invented by a writer. It never happened. So this, the, the, the OP replies, feminine cis men have to be trans, and it's okay to push them to identify as such. That's true. And that's real. Uh, so I actually have a lot of takes about this. Is Finster right? Is femboy not going to be a term by 2026? You know, who knows? The wheels of society chug and chug, and, you know, nobody can explain why. I think there's a broader conversation to be had here, and I don't agree with Finster entirely, based on the arguments being presented in the video. Now, of course, this is just a, a clip of what was said. I'm not going to look for the source material, because I have an idea of what's being said. If I'm wrong, whatever, the broader takes will still be the same. But, like, so, so the argument being made here is that the word femboy will fall completely out of use by, like, 2026. You know, why would that be? Okay, there's a variety of reasons. Maybe a new term shows up, and it's better, more descriptive of whatever it's trying to describe, and people like it more, you know? It's kind of like how fads or whatever have always kind of worked. You know, people will attach themselves to a certain thing, and they'll enjoy it for a while, and then it'll fall out of fashion, and there will be people who are still using it, and they were usually the people who were doing it before it was popular, because it's very integral to them as a person, but the other people will move on. That's certainly possible. And it's not to say that being a feminine man is a fad or whatever, but the term femboy itself could be described as such, or in many ways, uh, and that would be one of the ways you could describe it. I think the problem that people have here when they talk about femboys, quote unquote, and the fact that so many femboys end up identifying as trans women and no longer identify as femboys or whatever and all this kind of shit. I think the reason why there's a lot of discourse around this is multifaceted, right? So the obvious one is, you know, the transphobes out there, the ones that are queer enough to find the femboys they see in porn attractive because they just want a warm hole to put their wiener in. Uh, and, you know, whom amongst us don't, right? And, like, whenever, you know, say, Bridget from Guilty Gear, it turns out the creator of the game and the character in the universe and yada 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 was like, yeah, uh, Brisket, turns out, not a femboy. Lul is a trans girl. Let's go. Very pog. The people who get mad at that are mad at it because they don't like trans people and don't think they should exist, or, you know, they don't even believe that they exist. And whatever justifications that they have for that, uh, usually being fucking stupid uh, and falling for easy propaganda by people who want their money and votes a lot of the time, you know, they believe it and blah, 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 blah. And that's the big reason why those kinds of people will get mad about it. Coincidentally, these people are also very big fans of anime and also kissless virgins. <clears throat> so that certainly doesn't help either. But that's the easy one. That's the obvious one. Then you have people who identify themselves as femboys and do all the things associated with femboydom, as it were, and are worried that their little in-group of femboys or whatever will lose members and become trans. And it's not like a transphobic thing necessarily, though there could be like some inbuilt, internalized shit there. But rather, it's just like, oh, well, I like the vibes here with the femboy term. I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm experiencing. I like what other people are doing with the term and whatnot. I've attached my identity to this term. And anytime I see a person or a character in a fictional context no longer identify with the term, you know, that wounds me. Because, you know, I would like to see more of people similar to me. That's a very common human experience. People like other people that are like them. Now, if you're super based, you like people who aren't like you. But at a baseline, people like other people that are like them makes sense and then you can fall into a lot of bullshit like this where this person is probably very obviously transphobic but there will be people that would like unironically use this talking point which by the like once again on paper is fine it's just that it's not really happening it's a made-up problem and it's usually used as a way to be transphobic without putting your nuts on the table and actually being transphobic but there will be people who will fall into this trap uh, you know so to speak of um, using this argument, who don't rather understand the transphobic usage of it and the fact that it's not really a problem to begin with. So what I think, one of the people's main problems with this discourse and why people kind of bristle at the idea of uh, the term femboy going out of fashion or femboy being like a stepping stone on the path to self-actualization when it comes to somebody's gender identity and people end up being trans femme in whatever context, past being gender nonconforming but still identifying as a man like femboys are, you know, assumed to be, is because it's the same problem as with, you know, a lot of others in this umbrella, uh, is people don't know the difference between gender and biological sex still 
you know? They are unaware of the scientific consensus. They are unaware of the many appeals to authority that I could make when it comes to people's understanding of basic and advanced biology and the fact that gender is a sociological concept that is, you know, interfaces with the biological concept that is sex, but, you know, is not extrinsically linked or whatever. And obviously a lot of people who are transphobic are going to, you know, use it for that, or people might accidentally do so. But the difference here being femboy isn't a gender identity, never has been. It's an aesthetic descriptor. It is a way of dressing and acting. People will be like, well, boy is in the name, so they have to be identifying as men to use the term, right? And this is like the whole conversation that, and discourse that we've had in the past about like non-binary femboys or like women who identify as femboys. I'm on the based side of things where I don't care, you know? You could be a cis woman, and if you want to call yourself a femboy, I don't give a shit. And it is often the case that if they are going to do that, it's likely that they'll dress and act like people expect femboys to act. And also, if the argument is, well, femboys in the name, so they have to be boys, I got news for you. We got tomboys out there, too. It's an aesthetic descriptor. So when you think of the term femboy, the most common understanding of what that is is going to be a very feminine person who is assumed to be identifying as a man. And you'll often also think about like very standard outfits that you see femboys in, which will often be, you know, skirts, thigh highs, oversized sweatshirts or hoodies or crop tops, uh, stuff like that. That's the usual common usage for it. And that's what you will see. If you look it up, that's what you will see, because that's what the term femboy has come to describe in its modern usage. It's an aesthetic descriptor. If you wanted to bring that into some kind of biological context, the more accurate term would be like feminine man or feminine boy. And obviously femboy is just a portmanteau of feminine boy, but it's, it, there's a difference there in that femboy is a mimetic term that describes an aesthetic and is a subculture, whereas to be feminine as a, a man or a boy is just a description of your presentation as it exists on the masculine to feminine spectrum with androgyny in the middle. That's the problem I think people have. So one of the reasons why I've talked about this a lot is because I used to identify with the term femboy. I don't really anymore, though it still technically applies considering I use any pronouns, I am agender and simultaneously all of the genders because I don't care about my gender, yada, yada, yada. Like technically it applies, but I don't really use it anymore. I stopped identifying with the term a lot sooner than I like stopped using it or identifying myself as it in public. And the rationale I always had is that it's a marketable term. It's good for SEO, search engine optimization. Femboys are a popular thing, and it technically describes me. So if I use it to describe myself and people find it and they are looking for it, it'll, you know, help me with, you know, growing a platform or whatever. That was the idea. And I don't want to, like, put words in Finster's mouth or whatever, but I seem to recall similar thought processes being expressed by him. I could be wrong. Welcome to be corrected. But that's a thing that a lot of people will deal with especially when they're learning more about their gender identity past simple gender nonconformity while still identifying as a cis man in this instance, right? So I wrote, even when I identified most with the term femboy, I was always aware of it as more of an aesthetic rather than something intrinsically tied to my gender, which is true. You know, I didn't like identify as femboy gender. I understood myself at the time to like likely be a cisgender man that just happened to enjoy dressing femininely. And I also dressed in the ways that most dudes do when they're first dabbling in, you know, dressing femininely. You get the thigh highs, you get the skirts, you get the oversized hoodies or the crop tops. And it's usually like hyper feminine presentations because you go from the expectation for your gender as a guy being fairly boring, let's be honest. It's getting better, but pretty fucking boring. Not really like accentuating a variety of things that might be feminine about you, but rather suppressing them and trying to be more masculine because that's the expectation for men and whatnot, right? So then once you realize you can not do that and you can actually be feminine, usually people will go straight to the other side of the spectrum there and do a kind of hyper feminine way of dressing and acting just to like feel it out. And that's totally fine. Because the thought process being, well, I've tried doing this one. Let's try to go to the other side of the spectrum. And then eventually I'll either end up staying there and that's where I want to be or I'll shift in one direction or another along the feminine masculine spectrum. It's a common way people figure this shit out. And that's how it was for me. I went on to say, well, I've already went over this. 
So anyone can dress this way, as I described femboys as dressing, and many who don't identify as men do. They may also call themselves femboys. So I've had a lot of people be like, oh, well, no, it's actually nice if everybody who uses the term femboy is actually identifying as a man, because men need a space, a carve out in order to express their femininity in a way, and it's good for that. And like, I can sympathize with that argument, but I'm not a big fan of like prescriptivism or essentialism in that sense when it comes to gender expression, aesthetics, and whatnot. And obviously that's like influenced by my thoughts on gender broadly, uh, in that I'm not a big fan of the social concept of it in the way that it currently operates, where people are expected to be a certain way and are socially negatively impacted for not expressing their gender in the way that is expected. Not a big fan of that. In my ideal society, in a gender abolished society, there would still be a kind of concept like gender, it just wouldn't be very important. It would just be like another thing that people do, right? <clears throat> Whereas in the current day, it influences a lot about how you interact with the world and it restricts you and can even harm you in many ways. And that's not good. I don't like the restriction of freedom. I don't like the harm being done to people for such stupid reasons either. I continued. Femboy in common use is more a marketable term useful for identifying with a certain aesthetic rather than a description of one's gender identity. I believe this helps explain the common experience people have moving on from the term. It's less a move from a gender identity and more to a new aesthetic presentation. And I think that's what is kind of being described in the Finster clip and the broader discourse, is that when we suggest that the word femboy might not be used anymore by 2026, and the reason being, you know, how many femboys still identify as such five years later, it's hard to name them because they're all trans. I don't think that it's the case that them being trans is the major operative factor there, because that's a description of somebody's gender identity, right? You can be a trans woman and dress as masculinely as possible. You can be a trans man and dress as femininely as possible. Obviously, the gendered expectations would have you do otherwise, but I don't give a fuck. You know, do what you will. We stand masculine women, feminine men, and all other variations, okay? It's not that people are moving from femboy to become transgender or whatever, and that's why the term isn't being used anymore or they're not identifying with it anymore, but rather they're moving from one aesthetic to another in many cases. Obviously not always. There will be people that have their gender identity tied more to this move than others, and it is often the case that it influences it, uh, like it did for me, for instance. But, like, it's not intrinsically linked, is what I mean to say. So, like, you'll go from dressing in the expectation for the femboy aesthetic to dressing in a different way, be it more masculinely, more femininely, more, like, I guess, woman passing, for lack of a better word, like, dressing essentially like women do, which isn't like a femboy, uh, you know might come as a shock to some people whose exposure to gender nonconformity and the world around them overall comes from pornography. Women out there dress in certain ways, and uh, it's not like femboys usually. <laughs> um, so if you no longer dress, quote unquote, like a femboy, like the expectation for one, and you just dress like, you know, the average woman walking down the street, it doesn't really matter how you identify when it comes to your gender. You could still be a cis man, you could still be a trans woman or a non-binary person, whatever the fuck. The aesthetic has changed. So it's more so that you're moving from one set of clothes and gendered expressions to another, but your gender identity, it may change or it may stay the same. It's not linked to it in any essential way. It can shift. They run parallel to each other. They're not, like, locked together. That's how I've always thought about it. And it seems to be the case as well. So in the case of Finster, for my understanding anyway, he started out as a gender nonconforming man, right? That was the start. And the term femboy was used and Finn did dress in the way people expect femboys to and continued to use the term to describe himself because of whatever reason he decided to. Be it because it was a good description of his overall aesthetic be it because it was a marketable term that was good for SEO, because that's just a fact that it has been for him, right? Much the same way that I described for my own experience. There could be a variety of reasons for it. But then, you know, through the process of exploring one's gender through gender nonconformity, by being a person who was assigned male at birth and then dressing more femininely and even hyper femininely, you end up starting to conceptualize your own gender differently in many instances. You'd be like, okay, well, you know, I'm kind of dressing, quote unquote, like a woman is expected to. What's all this woman stuff about? You know, what's, what's this being a girl thing about? You know, maybe that works for me. 
and you do a bunch of soul searching, you try things out, you ask people to use she, her pronouns for you or whatever, you ask like trusted people, partners or whatever to change how they interact with you based on how you would like to be interacted with if you were in fact identifying as a woman. Uh, yeah, all this kind of stuff. And it helps you figure out your broader gender identity. And eventually you figure out, oh no, I am just, you know, I identify as a man. I just like to be feminine. Or you go on to be like, no, I'm a trans woman or I'm non-binary. I'd still like the term femboy and I still like the aesthetic, so I'm still going to use it. Or you go on from the term femboy being an apt descriptor for yourself to something else, right? There's a whole bunch of different branching paths that you can go through, but that's part of why femboy for a lot of trans femmes is kind of like a stepping stone. It's like your first toe in to being gender nonconforming and being more feminine as somebody who has throughout your whole life been expected to be masculine. And it is currently, because it's such a popular term, one of the more acceptable ways to be so, to do so. It is one of the more acceptable and easier like ways to put your foot in the door of gender nonconformity that you won't get a lot of shit for. Like, it, obviously, cisgender, heterosexual even, gender non-conforming feminine men will still be subject to transphobia, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be not as overt, and you're not going to be putting as much of a target on your back, especially in the current cultural context, than if you identified as a trans person, especially a trans woman, right? So using the term femboy is like, oh, guys, don't worry. I'm not with that crazy gender nonsense. I'm still a guy. I just like, you know, dressing very femininely. And for some people, that's just true, you know? And for others, it's a self-defense mechanism to not have to deal with all the transphobia that would be more likely to happen if they identified as a trans woman. There's a whole bunch of different reasons why these things happen. And a lot of people don't really think about them in that way, I guess. And that's why I like to talk about it. Because, you know, presenting my perspective, being a person who went from just being a cisgender, even at one point heterosexual man who just happened to dress femininely and using the term femboy for that, uh, especially considering like how I was dressing, like the intro femboy way, to eventually understanding myself to just be trans feminine and even before HRT to then going on to medically transition by taking estrogen by suppressing the previously dominant hormone in my body, testosterone, and supplementing it with the now dominant hormone in my body, estrogen, in the form of the injection of the blood of God, estradiol cypionate, into my goddamn leg every week. And where I ended up was just a agender slash omnigender, all gender, amoebic blob that uses any pronouns, because I don't care about my gender at all. I care about the way that I'm expressing myself and it does interface with gender identity because that's how our current society conceptualizes a lot of these things. And I live in that society, unfortunately, for all of you, you're stuck in here with me. So it does like influence me in that way. But in my ideal scenario, like it wouldn't just turn me into a changeling. I don't want to choose. Same. I wish I was a fucking shapeshifter. God damn. There are days where I want to be hyper feminine and be perceived in society as such, right? and engaged with in society as such. There are days where I want to be hyper-masculine and perceived and engaged with in society as such. There are times where I want to be in the middle somewhere. And my general, like, ambient resting place is usually like a androgynous feminine presentation, which has actually waned recently, given what the fuck I'm wearing today. Um, I've moved on to the based enlightened position of andromask outfits with feminine body, you know? Feminine body proportions but the more masculine personality and, you know, tone of speech and whatnot. It's like, that's, that's where I've ended up. And I don't think femboy really suits me anymore. And it's not because I'm not a feminine man anymore, because technically I am, right? You could call me one and I don't give a shit. It's not entirely accurate, obviously, given, you know, my actual gender identity, but it still technically works. You know, I also don't dress as the expectation for femboys is anymore. So there are the last time I did was many moons ago as well. I could probably bring it up on my community tab. Funnily enough, it, I I don't take as many selfies of myself anymore now that I've moved over to a more andro mask like clothing style. And part of it is because like feminine outfits are just a lot of fun and usually very flashy. Though nowadays like more masculine presentations and clothing is getting flashier too, which is a good thing, um, especially for the boys out there because they've been hurting for a good fashion for a long time. But also, like, feminine poses are just a lot more fun, and in my view, more visually appealing. So when I'm dressing in a more masculine way, like, I could pose femininely for a picture, 
But there is like a visual incongruity between how I'm dressed and how I'm posing that my brain doesn't like as much. Not that I like dislike it in a general sense, but rather like aesthetically speaking, what my eye is seeing, the disconnect while it's fun to play with, I'm not the biggest fan of. So like when I'm dressing more masculinely, I will pose more masculinely because that's just, it makes sense to me. That's what I like to see when I'm doing it, right? But feminine poses are just a lot more fun for me. And I would imagine for a lot of other people considering. Masculine poses are always like no expression on the face, lower angles, very simple ways of holding your body. Whereas for more feminine poses, you're sticking your gat out for the Rizzler, you know, you're accentuating the curves and whatnot, or you're posing in a very masculine way while presenting very femininely. And that visual disconnect is a lot more fun, considering the fact that masculinity is preferred and privileged in our society. You know, there's a lot of shit going on. Also, it's taken a while for me to find this goddamn selfie. Well, here's this one, though. I don't, I don't know that I would call this a femboy outfit. It's close, for sure. It's certainly, it, it checks the boxes. But when I see this, like, I, I could see it being described as femboy, right? But it's not like the expectation. And a lot of that is unironically that the outfit is, in my view, not to toot my own horn, put together a bit more. Whereas a lot of femboy outfits are kind of like, not that great when it comes to the composition of the outfit. <laughs> um, which is fine and also endearing in its own way, right? I find it very nice, actually, when people are dressing in a way that is not, like, optimal when it comes to the composition of it. It's fun, and it's endearing, and it's nice. Because, like, I've been there, for one. And for two, like, it, it's still nice to look at a lot of the time for a lot of these dudes who are super feminine, right? But um, this is not the one I was looking for. The fit does go hard, though. Like, it, it does go... And like I say, like, posing femininely is so much more fun, hello? Try it sometime. There's so much more shit you could do. You put your little hip out, you accentuate the curves, you sit on a chair backward, and you do some whatever the fuck this is. It's cute, that's all I know. <laughs> it's fun. Where the hell? I I'm getting close. So here's like, okay, so here's actually an interesting one. This is more similar to how I'm dressing nowadays. I'm wearing the same pants, but I'm wearing Tim's right now, black ones. Um, and obviously a plain black sweatshirt and uh, a fucking fishing vest, <laughs> which I think is sick, by the way. I have the shirt tucked in, and I'm wearing these pants high-waisted, and it's slightly untucked so that it goes over a little bit. It's pretty good, in my opinion. I'm wearing a lot more jewelry nowadays, too, which I like. Um, but, like, on the left side here, like, this is still a fairly feminine pose because I just look feminine, at least compared to if I didn't, right? If I looked more masculine. But, like, you have the necklace, the choker, um, you've got... The fact that I have big kissable lips because of my genetics. I've got thighs that will not quit that are bulging through these joggers. But like the the overall pose, is, you could see a masculine dude sitting like this and taking a picture. Um, whereas on the right, that's very feminine. It's the two genders. Even the facial expression is more feminine because I look stupid as hell. And for some reason, that's what people expect feminine people to look like. And it's very cute in that context. I don't make the rules, okay? We love... <clears throat> smart women we love stupid women we don't really love smart men as much but we love stupid men as long as they're socially progressive that's the good shit anyway but like you see what i mean i think the reason i feel weird about feminine poses and masculine clothes is because i still have the idea women can be a little masculine but not the other way around stamped in my head and that's why i also love it yeah yeah it's a big part of the socially acceptable ways of dressing for people and the expectations placed upon people given their, you know, gender assigned at birth, where it's more okay for cisgender women to be tomboys and dress in a masculine way, because that's not threatening to masculinity, uh, at least not as much as a man dressing in a feminine way. To the reactionary right-wing conservative dipshits out there that are really having a tough time hiding their homoerotic urges and are deciding to do so through, you know, violent adherence to delusional thought processes, the idea of a man going from a privileged position that is being masculine, being a man in our society, because that's literally how it was built. For a long time, women could not vote. They could not own property. They could not open a fucking credit line without a man's approval. Now there's more equality in that way, which is already a threat to the privileged position men are in. And it's not to say that all men are in this. They're like all men will benefit in some capacity, even like idly, not even trying to, by the fact that they're men and if they're presenting masculine especially. But not every man is like for one in favor of that, for two even like aware of it. Um and I'm sure there are definitely people that are interested in maintaining it and keeping that patriarchal structure in place. Um, but like a lot of the people that 
might even be like okay with feminine men even and whatnot may still go on to vote for politicians that will implement policies that make gender nonconformity less likely, right? Which is kind of the point. Uh, so the reason why women are allowed to be more masculine basically is that that is less of a threat to masculinity broadly and to men broadly than a man deciding to give up that privileged position to be more feminine and subject himself to that many negative debuffs. The negative debuffs that were built into the system for feminine people, usually women. Now that said, we saw the recent, um, I always forget if it's Kristen or Kirsten. I think it's Kristen. Kristen Stewart, uh, Rolling Stone magazine cover that I, we did a video on, where now that's even changing. Uh, and it's always been the case, but obviously there's a big focus on gender and gender expression in the modern day. One of the two major political parties, the Republican Party, has based its entire party platform on the eradication of gender nonconformity from public life and a return to very strict, legally binding adherence to the expectations of your gender given your birth sex. The Republican Party, uh, like it, it's the thing nowadays, obviously. So even nowadays, a woman being more masculine and doing a little bit of a tomboyery, like Kristen Stewart did for that Rolling Stone cover where she wore a jockstrap and posed in a more masculine way as promo for a lesbian film or something that she was in. She's a lesbian herself, but I believe she's cisgender. Uh, and identifies as a woman. Even that is a bridge too far for a lot of the deranged, terminally online, schizophrenic fucking idiots on the right. And I shouldn't say, you know, you know, no, no disrespect to genuine schizophrenics out there. Best of luck to you. Hope you're able to get the help you need. My bad. But like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's fucked up. So even then, like now that's a bridge too far. And that's because it is technically a method of eroding the method of control that the right and reactionaries have enjoyed for so long over other human beings because that's what they love. It gets them off. They love to restrict people's individual liberty, bodily autonomy, and force people to be the way that they want them to be. And reason being because they live in a delusional worldview with no basis in actual reality. That's why they're all anti-empiricist. That's why they all laugh at the notion of scientific consensus on the separation of gender and sex. That's why they're all, you know, anti-vax and all this kind of shit. They don't like reality because it's uncomfortable for them. And because of that, they want to substitute your reality with theirs. And the only way they can do that, because they're losing the culture war for it, where it's not, you know, done by force through the legal system or extra legal means, because they've lost that, where it's kind of a soft power to control people, they're losing to the people should be free, actually, side of things, shockingly, in the culture anyway. They're now having to resort to using force in order to keep that system in place to reinforce it through legal means, through drafting laws, restricting people's ability to be gender nonconforming in public, restricting pride events, restricting people being able to use the bathroom of their choosing, whatever is better for them, and trying to force like people that look like hyper feminine women to go into the men's room just because they happen to be assigned male at birth or whatever, which just puts that person in so much of harm's way. Like if the logic is men, which we, you know, they obviously assume all trans women are men actually, just men in dresses and wigs. If the theory there is that, oh, well, men will then go into women's rooms and aggress upon women, for one, they've already done that and it's against the law. Like, men will go in not dressed as women and do it anyway. If they were going to break the law in that way, they were already breaking the law. I don't think they need to get a bunch of surgeries and hormones or dress a certain way to do that. It seems kind of like more work than it's worth. The juice is not really worth the squeeze at that point. Uh, and for three, if the idea is that men in the women's room is so dangerous because the men are dangerous to the women or to the feminine people in that instance, well then, should it not be the case that if you're going to force a super feminine person that most people would assume is just a woman, if they walk down the street into the men's room, you would be putting that person in harm's way? The answer is yes, obviously, dumbass, but they want to because they don't want that person to exist. It's a method of making the public life of that person so difficult to the point where they either, you know, in the kind scenario, they end up going back into the closet or no longer being gender nonconforming in that way, yada, 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 and going back to conforming in the way that they want to control that person to be, or they get killed, and that's another way to remove that person from the society, or they take their own life because of immense social pressures put upon them by, you know, one of the major political parties in the country, making a major plank of its political party being the eradication of said person from public life, you know? The kind way is for the person to go back in the closet. The unkind way is for them to kill you uh, through whatever means. And the kinder way than that is for them to enforce conditions so detrimental to your mental health that you do it by your own hand, you know? And that's fucked up very clearly. 
think any normal person would come to that conclusion. I think most normal people would be like, yeah, freedom's good. I don't give a shit what people are doing so long as they're not hurting anybody or themselves. Frankly, some people might not even say the themselves part. Like, there are ways that you can hurt yourself, and it's, like, fine. Like, you can binge eat, and that's probably not good for you. It's probably going to hurt you in some way, but, like, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. I'm not going to be, like, motherfucking governor of New York, Bloomberg, and make it so you can't get your triple XL Big Gulp from 7-Eleven or whatever. I'm not doing that. But uh, anyway, I love rambling. It's what I do. It's my life. I found it! Let's go from 10 months ago. And this is not even to say that these pictures were taken 10 months ago. I just reposted shit, I'm pretty sure. This, I would say, is a femboy outfit. And this is the last time I dressed in one, um, because it's just not really my vibe anymore. Where you got the oversized shirt, you've got the mesh undershirt, we've got the choker, we've got the thigh highs, the fishnets underneath. We got six shoes that I still wear to this day. Um, we've got a garter on one leg because we love asymmetry in this house. And both of the poses are very feminine. I would say that this is a femboy outfit. You could look at this and be like, yeah, that's a femboy, you know? So this is to say I've been in the sauce, and that's why I have these thoughts and opinions. And it's not to say that your thoughts or opinions on the topic, so long as they agree with mine, of course, are having less value because you haven't been in the mix like I have, but rather it helps inform my thought processes in such a way that I think is helpful for coming to these conclusions or whatever. I think if you're not a femboy, you should be able to understand a lot of this or have never had been a femboy. And I hope that my continuous rambling has been helpful to that end. If you had not thought about it in this way, you know, I hope to uh, have helped you think. It's a good outfit, though. Like, I would wear it again. I just don't care enough nowadays. Too much work, for one. Like, putting on this outfit is enough work. And it's just fucking pants, a regular-ass blank black sweatshirt that I wish was a little bit bulkier, but I haven't bought a new one yet. That's what I got. I would like the sleeves to be a bit baggier. A fucking angler's vest, which is sick. I thrifted it. Pretty good find, in my opinion. I'm wearing black Tims, which are sick, you know? And even that's hard to get into. It takes me a fair amount of time to get ready. And they say women take forever to get ready, huh? Men are starting to take some time to get ready. They're trying to figure it out. The thing is, is that most men dress like shit and don't care about how they look because society doesn't expect them to care about how they look. It doesn't force them to. Whereas, you know, women and feminine people are expected to exhibit femininity in a certain way, and that way involves a lot more fucking work, like putting together outfits and wearing outfits with a lot of more moving parts and difficult things to put on, and wearing makeup and all this kind of shit, which is a whole skill that you have to learn and deal with, and it takes a lot of fucking time, even if you're really good at it, you know? So it's not that, you know, men don't take forever because they know what they're going to wear, and they put it on, and they're so much better at putting clothes on. They take less time. They speed run that shit. It's because they don't have to care. So they just throw on whatever and bada bing, bada boom. They don't got to put makeup on. They don't even have to shower. We don't expect men to shower in this society. We don't even expect men to wipe their own asses, much less wash them in the shower. Crazy. And yeah, those low expectations, while they can be a benefit for some, are often a negative for a lot of fucking people. Because of that, like, it's difficult for a lot of men to express themselves. It's difficult for a lot of men to stand out in the crowd and kind of, like, be more of, like, a person that people are interested in looking at. Because the expectation for men is to be the default. And to be the default is boring. It doesn't stand out. You're a background character, right? It sucks. And then, because of that, it becomes harder, uh, especially because of social conventions around dating and the expectation that men have to do all the courting, and that's not because women made it that way, it's because men made it that way. Because a woman going after and courting men, she's a slut, she's a hoe, she's for the streets. A man going out pursuing women, well, that's just how it's supposed to be because back in the caveman days, they would have to knock a woman over the head and it's not good, man. We don't need to return to that tradition. <laughs> Motherfuckers out here like, oh my God, I hate feminism because as a man, I have to go out and pursue the women and women have it so easy because they're always pursued by the men. It's like the call is coming from within inside the house, man. It's not that you personally did it, but other fucking men out there put this shit into place and you're standing against people who were trying to fix it. Figure your shit out, man. It is literally a faux pas socially for women to proposition men for whatever kind of relationship. And in, in many instances, it is also unsafe for them to do so. So they just default to the default. And because of that, that hurts men. It means that if you don't have the Riz, if you're not the Rizzler, she's not going to stick the gat out for you. Frankly, she's not. It means that, like, if you are an average Joe, you're going to have a tougher time. And if you're a below average Joe, God bless you, because it's going to be tough. 
But there are a lot of women out there dating and married to below average Joes, as it were. It is a very common trope to be like the hottest woman you've ever seen, walking alongside the fucking thumb thumbs from Spy Kids. And they're happy. They're vibing. Women have bad taste. I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. <laughs> it's not that like so-called ugly or like not super handsome men can't get a date. It's just that society has made it a bit harder for them. There are a lot of women out there that are into ugly dudes. I don't get it, but it, it, it happens. It's just that it's harder for the ugly dudes to proposition women because of the societal bullshit, and you're, like, being debuffed for no goddamn reason. Like, I watched Dune recently, the first and the second, and you know there are women out there that are just head over heels for one of the Harkonnen dudes, the one that Dave Bautista plays or whatever. What was this dude's name? That's the R in the game, or in the, in the show, in the movie. Um, Harkonnen. What is it? Raven? Ravon? Something like that. Let me see. How do you, how you start doing this dick? How about I start doing two of your moms, bro? Harkonnen, uh, Ra... Ravon. Ah. Like, you know, there are monster fuckers in denial in the cisgender heterosexual woman ecosystem who are just like, wow. This is my shit. There are so many women out there that, like, love ugly-ass villains in media. <laughs> and it's not to say that if you look like this, you are, like, unlovable and get the fuck out. I might not find you attractive, but who the fuck am I? Why do you care what I think? I'm nobody. But rather, society would dictate that this person is not very attractive. And we're trying to change that, okay? For all you ogre motors out there, all you ogre moting men out there, I'm trying to make it better for you, too. All right? Because there are people into you. And it's just hard for them to get to you, and for you to get to them. <laughs> anyway, I will say, Raban in the, what is it, the 1984, whatever, the 19, whatever the fuck, Dune, is so goofy looking. <laughs> I have to say, I like the new one more. Someone wants to be your Fiona? Exactly! You think it's a fucking fictional movie? Shrek is real life, bro. Princess Fiona, not only is she a monster fucker and she wants the ogre, the ogok, but she becomes a ogre as well. Like, she's that about it. That not only is she, like, this beautiful woman, pre ogreification that just really into Shrek as an ogre, but also, now she wants to be this beautiful woman, but as an ogre. You know? There are a lot of women out there. Donkey with the dragon? That's not what we're talking about, man. <laughs> That's a different thing. It's in the realm of monster fucker, don't get me wrong. But, uh, it's not what we're talking about. <clears throat> Same top as before, but with the joggers instead. Very pog. Very champ. Big fan of this one. What else we got? Now I'm already here. Oh yeah, here's the outfit again. The same one as before. Like, this is some femboy shit, bro. I know what I'm talking about. They don't call me the Pope of the Femboys for nothing. These are decrees that I'm laying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, this is pretty good. I would say that the pose on the right is obviously very feminine. But the pose on the left, like, I think this is a pretty andro pose. Maybe I'm fucked in the head. I am, but, like, in this way. Where, like, the pose to me here is actually pretty masculine. It has a lot to do with the facial pose and that I'm not doing anything, really. But, like, the fucking thigh with the leg, like, it, that's pretty femme. And, like, the fact that I'm wearing what I'm wearing when it comes to the top. It's, like, oversized on the sleeve. Like, that's pretty femme. But the pose itself and the face is pretty masked. You could see a dude posing like this, maybe not with the arm like this necessarily, but I mean, rather than it being like more flaccid, for lack of a better term, it would be more rigid, like they're holding on to something or holding on to their own side or something like that. Like, there's a way, or like it's like you, you're doing like this, like you're you got your arms crossed, but whatever, you know, it's pretty good. What I mean to say is, play with your gender, okay? It's fun. Feels very skater boy to me for some reason. Well, this is another femboy outfit, kind of. Now, you could see a cisgendered woman wearing this, and I would like to, but this is a fairly femboy fit. It's a lot of leg. We got the fishnets. Got an oversized shirt. Underneath is short shorts. Pretty femboy. I, this era, the legging era, I don't miss it necessarily, but I don't not miss it. It's pretty chill. Oversized tops are huge. I guess goes without saying. Need me an oversized top, you know? <laughs> but like I, I, it's, it's good I don't know I like it this is also really true see also ABBA not the musician 
but rather the new Guilty Gear Strive character. Always biting shit. It's real as hell. Let's see. I'm trying to find more examples, and I'm also just looking at myself. Like Narcissus in the reflection in the pond. And that's my God-given American right, goddammit. It's pretty chill. Sweatpants, t-shirt. Anybody could wear this outfit. But the way I'm posing makes it feminine, right? And, like, obviously with, like, my face and the fact that I'm wearing makeup and my hair. Also feminine, but, like, you get what I mean. Also, how did I get my hair like that? What the hell? I've been struggling to get it to go straight down. It does not want to dry that way. It wants to dry out more and go down. It's annoying. It's a good hair day. Same outfit as before. We stand. Reusing selfies because we take 8,000 of them in a single session. Uber, what are you buzzing about? Hello, boy. He's gotten to his, uh, his usual resting place, which is on my bed on top of the mountain of a uh, pillow and blanket that's underneath the flat sheet that I put on my bed as a protection from the cats because I'm allergic to them. Holy shit in the wild? What the fuck? Kanye, do you really go outside dressed like that? Exhibit A. Now I'm just having fun going through the fucking memory hole. Here's me channeling the green bitch from Kim Possible. Also, I'll probably go back to dressing like this one day. It, it ebbs and flows. You know, tide goes in, tide goes out. You can't explain that shit. Like I said, lately I've been feeling more mask. Andro femme, mask, andro mask, mask, andro femme, mask, mask. It's an awfully hot coffee pot. But like, I know what my strengths are. And I know that I'm not necessarily playing to them, dressing a bit more masculinely. That said, if you have short ass legs like I do, the oversized top, while it like it, but it being like pretty short, looks not even oversized at that point. With the leggings and the shoe, good way to make your legs look longer, as you can tell. Holy shit! And then you know you could do this as well, because that's nice. I gotta take selfies again, but it's so much fucking work. Oh yeah, here's you know here's this <laughs> this old ass picture. Another the pandemic versus now. Pretty chill. I would say this fit is more femboy, by the way. At the time on the, the picture on the left, I was already dressing more femininely. Just not all the time. And still not all the time, but you know what I mean. I was dipping my toe. That TV? Yeah, it was for Mario. Before I got a good HDMI upscaler that doesn't have input delay. The RetroTink Mini. Or 2X Mini. At this point, I was feeling out like the tomboy vibe a lot more, as you could tell. Good. This is such a good picture, dude. So cute. What the fuck? I really like... Even still to this day, though, I don't really wear it. The fishnet, no-show sock, converse, or any other shoe, really. Oversized shirt look. It's very good. Big fan. Very femboy. Look, it's the Amazon skirt. It's still my favorite skirt, but I don't have many. <laughs> but, like, it can look good-ish, you know, if you use it well. It's crazy to think that, like, this is a masculine outfit for me at this time. <laughs> Like, I'm wearing this shit nowadays, and I'm like, I'm like the, oh, this is pretty mask, actually. I'm getting a little crazy. <laughs> but like, a lot of it is canvas, too, for better or for worse. Anyway, are there any other cool things here? Oh, speaking of, got on HRT just to be a tomboy. Real. I'm not a perpetual beanie wearer. It's just that I will wear them often, usually when it's approaching hair washing day, because my hair will look like shit, as it currently does without the beanie. Like, there is no beanie present here. That said, I am told by multiple sources that my forehead is really not that big. But even when I was a kid, I always thought it was. So it's like a, my brain is fucked kind of thing. So the beanie hiding what I perceive to be, but apparently isn't, my five head is also very helpful. That's why Tim Pool does it. But also because he's balding. But luckily, I'm not balding yet. So. That's no shame to anybody who is. There are a lot of fucking pretty ass bald people out there. And some bald people, too. You just gotta embrace it. Like, Northern Lion, perfect example. Ryan Letourneau, paragon of masculine excellence. And yes, I did say excellence. Happens to be bald. Also, um, is it Jada Smith, or is that... One of the Smiths happens to have a th the condition that makes it so that she doesn't grow hair or whatever. Pretty as hell. With, uh, not Jaden, Jada. Yeah, Jada Pinkett Smith, I was right, thank God. Like, she'll wear, like, fucking wigs or whatever sometimes, and other times she'll just be bald. Looks good. 
The politician Ayanna Presley as well has a similar thing, I think. Keep my wife's name out. <clears throat> Man, I used to have such long hair. <clears throat> I hate it. Looks like shit, bro. Uh, That's a no from me. I know the length that I like to keep it at now. And it's annoying to deal with. I don't think it looks as good. I mean, it's like, it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but like, for one, it's too much work. For two, I have sensory issues with my fucking neck, so my hair tickling it annoys me. And for three, I like the short hair better. This was a good vibe. This was right after I'd gotten my hair cut, uh, and they waved it out. Good look. I'm too lazy to do this shit with my hair on my own, though. <laughs> I just let it fucking air dry down with a, a leave-in hair moisturizer. Turns out well enough. But anyway, we go far enough, we're going to see some shit. This outfit is fine, I suppose. Do you have a boyfriend? No, I've been single for like 10 years. I am gray sexual, as it were. Don't really care. I don't have many urges for uh, pursuing a romantic and or sexual relationship and haven't for a long time. So I don't. I don't really care, frankly. I said, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. Oh, here's another one. Kind of in my tomboy arc, not gonna lie. One year ago. <clears throat> How one year ago is this? Give me the actual date, you fucking piece of shit. I'm livid. Wanna know a secret? I wasn't actually wearing fishnets under these pants. These are two different days, two different outfits. You've been rused. <laughs> anyway, enough of this bullshit. Uh, fanboys are cool. I hope I helped you think about them in a way that you may not have before. Finster is neat, though I've never seen any of his content. Dune 2 was a fine movie, and I enjoyed it. Best of luck to you in your ambitions. Oh,